Hey there, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at using sockets uh, with Nest.js as our backend. And we're going to demonstrate this to the simple chat app, um, in which we'll use socket IO for uh, on the client side. But mainly this is a demonstration to see how the Nest.js framework fits in to using sockets. To start, I'm in an empty directory and I'm going to go ahead and generate a new Nest project. And we can just call it whatever we'd like. I'll call it socket backend. And like all my tutorials, I will leave a link in the description to the GitHub repo if you'd like to follow along. So once the project is finished initializing, we can go ahead and CD into it. And we're going to go ahead and install a few dependencies. So with your package manager, just go ahead and add uh, Nest.js web sockets and then Nest.js platform socket.io. Once that finishes, we'll also go ahead and add the types for socket.io. So if you're using yarn, that looks like this here, yarn add dash D <coughs> for dev dependency. And then once we have the types, we can go ahead and clear out our output and start up the server in the background. So I've gone ahead and opened up the project directory in VS Code. Um, and the first thing we're gonna go do here is and create the file that will be responsible for hosting our, our socket logic. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this chat.gateway. And a gateway is Nest.js's uh, abstraction of sockets. So they, they call them gateways and we'll see um, a little bit more of this in a second here. So let's go ahead and actually export the class called chat gateway. And importantly, to tell Nest.js that this is a socket implementation, we need to decorate it with WebSocket Gateway. And we import that from Nest.js WebSockets. And there's a couple other things we can include here. If we'd like to, we can specify a port number that this gateway should be running on. Uh, if you want it to be running on a different port than what the Nest.js server runs on in default, which is port 3000. So if we wanted to, we could specify uh, port 80, for example. Um, and another thing we can specify here as well, is if you're familiar with Socket.io, um, we could specify a namespace for just this gateway. And all that does is it separates out this gateway from other ones. Um, and so all messages you send and receive with the client in this gateway are only going to be sent in this particular namespace. So on the client side, we can join a particular namespace and only get messages for that namespace. But for this example, we only have one gateway, so we will just keep things simple. So now that we've set up the gateway, we also need to go ahead and tell Nest.js about it. So to do that, we will add it to the providers array here. So add the chat gateway we just created and import it above. Now in the chat gateway, this is where we're going to add all of the event handlers for an incoming socket message. So in our example for our chat application, we are going to have to handle incoming messages. Uh, we're going to want to broadcast them to all listeners of this gateway so that our chat you know, has a bi-directional flow to it. To do this, we'll create a new function here called handle message, which will simply handle an incoming socket message and send it back out. So we need to decorate this with a decorator called subscribe message from Nest.js WebSocket. And then we provided a string, which is the name of the message that we're listening for from the client. So the name that the client sends, in this case, we will call it message. We could call it anything, but this is a chat message, so it makes sense to call it message. Um, and then as the parameter here, we are going to extract the message body. And notice we have another decorator here. So this message is going to be a type string and we're going to return void. So what this decorator does is it just extracts out the message from the data payload that is coming in. From. If we prefer to not use decorators here, we can also use this form where we uh, get the client and then the data. This works just as well. So this way we'd have access to the client and can easily um, use methods on that. But in our case, we're really only concerned with the message body here. We don't need access to the client. 
and this will just make things cleaner because we get direct access to the message without having to extract it from the data payload. Now, when we get an incoming message, if we only wanted to send it to other people that are subscribed to this gateway, we would take that client and emit a message on it. But in our case, when we have a message that gets sent to our gateway, we wanna broadcast it to everyone on the server, including the person that sent it. So in order to do this, we need to get access to the server. And to do that, we can declare a class variable here called server and decorate it with WebSocket server. Uh, and Next.js will populate this with the server for the gateway. So now if we come back into our function body, we can call this.server.emit. And this is gonna emit a message to everyone on the server, including the person that sent this message, which will be important for our client-side implementation later. So we're gonna emit a message, uh, and this is the name of it, the name of the event we're emitting, it's a message. And all we're gonna do is just pass the one that came in and send it back to the server. So a client sends a message, and we are immediately broadcasting it to everyone on the server. And that's really it. This is how simple it is to implement sockets on the back end. Now let's go ahead and set up our client side so we can test this out. So to test out our WebSocket implementation, I'll create a new folder in our project called uh, socket client, which will be our client implementation. So in here, I'll just create an index.html. So I've gone ahead and added some basic HTML here. All this is just boilerplate, but there are a couple of important things we're doing down here. Uh, importing the socket IO library from a CDN so we get access to it. Um, and we're also importing a script called chat socket, which we'll go ahead and create. This script is what's gonna actually um, use socket IO and talk to our backend. Uh, a couple other things here is we're just creating two divs, one of which with an ID of messages is just gonna hold all the messages we receive. And the second div simply holds um, an input field with a button and that button has a click listener called handle submit new message, which we are going to set up in our chat socket. So in chat socket, the first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is create our new socket. Um, and we get access to IO from the CDN we've imported earlier in the HTML file. Now IO constructor here function takes uh, the URL for your WebSocket backend. And in this case, our Nest.js server is running on localhost port 3000. Um, and notice here, this is where we would have uh, taken advantage of that port earlier in our backend. If we wanted to specify a different port um, than what the server is running on, we could have. But we are just running the IO connection to our Nest.js server. There's a couple other things we're gonna do here, first of which we will uh, get access to the message. And if you remember correctly, the message is just the input field that the user uh, types a new message in. And then we'll also get access to the messages div or list rather. So you'll get element by ID messages. So next let's go ahead and set up our handle submit new message function here. So handle submit new message is just going to be a function. Uh, it doesn't take any parameters and all it's going to do is it's going to call socket.emit. And now we specify the name of this message so that when we submit it to our gateway, it will pick up into this function handler. So it has to match the name we specified here in subscribe message. So make sure we type in message here. And now we specify the data that we're gonna send. Now this data is what Nest.js extracts here in the message body with the data key. So it's gonna extract the the message body, which is simply just the data property here. And we are going to pass in message.value, which simply looks at the input field we have here and extracts the current value of it. And then emits it to our server. Now we need to set up a way to listen to incoming messages and populate them on our page. So to do that, we will call socket.on 
and we're going to listen for the event called message because remember the server is emitting the message event as well so on the client side we want to listen to it we pass in a callback function to execute when we get a new message um, and we're just going to destructure that uh, property we get back here to get the data from it the data payload we're going to go ahead and need to add it to our document our list of messages so that our chat uh, history is maintained so to do that we'll create a new function called handle new message and handle new message is going to take in a message And what it's going to do is it's going to call messages.appendchild, which is simply going to add a new HTML node to our uh, unordered list of messages. So we want to insert a new list item every time we get a new message. So we're going to append a new node here. And as we're trying to keep our code clean and make sure our functions only do one thing, we'll create a new function called uh, build new message which will be responsible for actually building the HTML, the HTML element. So it's going to take in the message and we'll go ahead and create the new list item here by calling document.create element. And then we're going to call append child on the list item. And we will add a create text node here, which allows us to pass in the message text to create a text node so that our list item has the text with inside of it. And now we can return the list item from this. And in messages.appendchild, all we have to do now is call build new message with the message passed in. Finally, back in our socket event handler, we just need to call handle new message and pass in the data. So now if we save, uh, we can go ahead and open up our index.html file. So I've gone ahead and opened our index.html file. I'll go ahead and open up the dev tools here so we can see if we have any errors, no errors, which is great. So we can see our input field here with a submit button. And we can type in text here. And we can notice that uh, as we send text, it gets appended to our list of messages. So this is great to see because it means that uh, the client that sends the message is also receiving it from the server and it's pending. Now, in order to see the chat room in action, we'll have actually go ahead and open up another window here. So now we have two instances of the chat room open. If we refresh this, so now if we send a message in this window, we should expect to see it in this one, which is great. So you can imagine if we're hosting this on a remote server, these two clients would be able to chat with each other and interact and see all of the messages between them. And obviously this is a very simple example, but it really shows the power and simplicity of using sockets with Nest.js. So thanks for watching.